and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, <coughs> better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a returning good brother to the temple. The madman behind the Chalt Trilogy and and way too many other projects to count. At least count succinctly. I don't want to be here all day just counting his ca his catalog. And now returning to Kickstarter with the Chalt experience. Designing worlds like a fucking boss. The one and only Venger Satanis. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm, do I'm doing good. Oh. I am st I am more or less recovered from holiday hell. I'm still ba I'm still banned from the kitchen because of once because of my little incident where I messed with the cranberry sauce where what <laughs> what everybody thought was cranberry sauce was was in reality red beets. Oh. Yeah, that's a that's a a wake up call for Thanksgiving dinner. Well, it was I did it was a stunt I did years ago, and as revenge because one of my relatives thought it'd be really funny to use trick candles on the on my birthday cake. Yeah. Then I waited two years and got back at everybody with the beats, and af after that <laughs> I was, uh, it was declared that I was banned from the kitchen for life yeah. for Ouch. any family gathering <laughs> because they did not want to take any chances in in that. And learn yeah. the hard way that I don't need to be in the kitchen to mess with people. And apparently, in some cases, I don't need to do anything in order to mess with people. And people are still going to be paranoid. Yeah. I do a lot of the cooking in the house. So that would that would be difficult for me and everybody else either living, living here or visiting. Mm -hmm. Because if the main guy that's making your food you can't trust, then... This Who can you trust? Yeah, well, this this was only for like the big ho the big holidays. So yeah, like, hey so guys, I made potatoes, and then you you put that on the the kitchen table, and they're like, you gotta be fucking kidding. Oh. <laughs> Tentacles like come out, and and the spider thing like from the movie, the thing like like sprouts up and starts walking around, and, like head never, backwards or upside you never down. Make, you'd never make turducken for the family or something. Yeah, no, I never have. I um, I usually play it safe. Every once in a while, I, I branch out. And you guys okay? You guys okay? What's going on? Hang on one second. What's going on? No what? So okay. So let's let's get into it because I yeah. I do not know how much time I have. Um, <laughs> I know we we organized this little sit down. A while ago, and then my wife surprised me, you know, like, three, four days ago, saying, like, oh, my eldest daughter and, and her want to go to a school basketball game. Mm -hmm. It was, like, right in the smack in the middle of, of this, so I got four kids that I'm kind of not watching in the background. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, yes, let's, let's ask me some questions, or yeah. if anybody, like... This isn't live, is it? <laughs> no, it's recorded. Okay, so yeah, it's, yeah. If you have any questions, or if you yeah. know, do people send you in questions ahead of time? I don't know how it works. But... Um, I usually I usually improv everything. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. So I will I will admit that this is the like a fucking boss. Um, is has been a series that has been a series that you've done. For a, for a good for a good while though I th I think this is the first new entry in a good amount of time. Um, last year, I don't even know. I'll say I'll just say last year. I, I think the beginning of two thousand twenty three, I came out with advanced game mastering like a fucking boss, mm -hmm. and that was the most recent for. A couple of years, because I started out big with how to game master like a fucking boss. That was, I believe, uh, my—I want to say my like third Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. 
So that was all the way back in, I don't know, 2014. And then in that, in that middle period, like 2015, 2016, 2017, I, I came out with play your character like a fucking boss and adventure writing like a fucking boss, one and two. And then I kind of let it go for a couple of years before revive, for renewing it with advanced game mastering like a fucking boss. And now, uh, now I've got the Chult experience designing worlds like a fucking boss. So yeah, that's kickstarting now. There's like mm-hmm. just under two weeks left, I think, for funding. And it's we're like right at the edge. We're like, I don't know, 97% funded. So, you know, obviously it'll get there. Uh, I'm hoping it's more like 10,000 than 5,000, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Now... With now, as far from what I understand, the pre, the premise when it comes to this iter, this iteration, um, designing worlds, mm-hmm. is more is more about using the experience that you had with that you had with designing Chalt into yeah. into showcase showcasing kind of the ins and outs, the method to the madness, as as it were, with its creation. Yeah, I mean, I'll be. Totally upfront. Um, I'm using my experience with creating felt as the total background for this book and what I've learned of the process of designing a world. Mm-hmm. Everything that goes into it, uh, you know, the the pleasures and the pitfalls and the the great and rewarding experience it is. Uh, but also, you know, the hassle and the, the obstacles and, you know, there's always a, a, a cloud to the silver lining. Mm-hmm. So, you know, preparing people for that and also teaching them how to design a world better um, and keeping in mind that designing the world is just a means to an end. What you really want at the end of the day is a campaign setting in which to game. Um, anyone that, that tries to do this from like an armchair approach, um, I think is going about it the wrong way or making a mistake or wasting their time. Um, it's for a specific thing. It's for a reason. Uh, and if you don't use it for that reason, then, you know, why bother? Um, so, the, the vast majority of stuff that you're creating um, isn't because, you know, you just want to write a whole bunch of fan fiction about this made-up world. It's because that's where you're sending your games that you're going to run. So uh, going into it with that knowledge, that probably changes your approach or changes your mindset or prepares you for all the work ahead. Because... Um, it is a lot of work. Uh, you don't have to put a ton of work into it. There are some shortcuts and some easier ways to go about it, which, you know, I tell people in the book and give people advice on making it easier. But, uh, if you want to take it as far as it can go, it's, it can be a virtually a lifetime process, which I don't know. I don't know if that surprises people. Um, before I got into it, I guess that would have surprised me. Mm-hmm. But just like role playing, the hobby itself is something where there's always more to do, and there's always more to to learn and to to know and to create um, with with an entire world. Um, you never really have to stop designing yeah uh you can you can take care of like 90 percent of it so it's kind of a lot of it works on clockwork where you you set it up in the beginning and then you just kind of let, let it go on its own but even when you're doing that and even when you're spontaneously gaming you know if you have that mindset um 
that you have designed your own world and you want a game in that world and you want it to be a living world, you're going to, even by accident, come up with, with cool new things about this world that you didn't even realize was, was there a year ago or six months ago or five years ago. I don't, I'm coming up with new stuff uh, in Chalt all the time. Um, and partially that's because I'm using it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this, I started um, a month, month and a half ago, uh, maybe two months ago now. I started the second Chalt campaign. And I'm going to try to let this one go as long as I possibly can. And the more it gets used, uh, the more creation happens. And the bigger it gets, and the more, I would say, real it gets, and um, the more realized. Mm-hmm. And... Not that not that I'm asking to go to go into spoilers with the book with the book, but what would you suppose would would be what would be one example of of something that in the early days of developing Chalts um, had had to had to get kind of um, t- had to get kind of taken out just because just because it didn't work in practice as well as you thought it would in pa- on paper. Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Um, you know what? I should probably look at my notes. That that would be a good thing for the book. Um, I'd probably look at some of my early blog posts when I was sort of brainstorming Chalt. Mm-hmm. I th- I'm sure there are things that I was like, oh, yeah, I want it to be like this and kind of like that. And then it turned out not to be like that at all. <clears throat> yeah. I can't. Um, I can't think of anything. I mean, the sort of kitchen sink approach. I, I come up with the, the kitchen sink approach means that, like, really, there's nothing almost that can't be shoehorned into Schultz, if I really wanted to, you know, there's always a way to put stuff in there, you know, if I wanted to. Um, sometimes I come up with, with something that is cool or funny or has some pop culture cachet. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, oh, this has legs, you know, this can, you know, be a mainstay of several adventures or this is going to be bigger in the next book or you know whatever and sometimes things just kind of like fizzle out um like the uh the city state of jalette which is like a like a, a matriarchy it's like a female led um you know city uh, mm-hmm. and I've done a little bit with that. I've described it in a few places and every once in a while you'll hear about it. Someone will be from that place or someone is on their way to Gillette. Um, but I probably don't use it, use it as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of stuff like that. Like I come up with like a thousand things and I end up using maybe 700 of them on a semi-regular basis. And so some things are there, but since they don't get used, it's like they're on the cutting room floor, I guess. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's the advantages and disadvantages of that kitchen sink approach. Yeah. I mean, you got to pick and choose because, Mm -hmm. because you literally can't have everything in every adventure or campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless the campaign goes for like, 10 years or something. I mean, maybe, even, but even then of all the things that you create, there's going to be a couple things that got mentioned once or maybe twice and then never again. Mm-hmm. So you really do have to pick and choose what you want in there and what you want to be the focus because you can't shoot. You can't just click the box or check the box. Like I want everything. 
Uh, that's practically that's not going to work. Um, and, and I think the book to have really real value needs to be practical. It needs to come from a space of like, here's how you do it in the real world. And here's how you, you know, practically apply that knowledge or whatever um, in your own game. So again, uh, it, it's not like an armchair thing where you're just in your, up in your ivory tower, like, you know, typing away like, oh, and then people should do this. Uh, you know, I want it to be a real field guide for doing it, doing the thing. And um, yeah, I think I think it'll be very rewarding and, and very cool. And I think every, every game master that really wants to level up in their hobby uh, should design their own world. Or even if they don't design their own world, like say they've got a favorite world that's, that was already created for them, like Dark Sun or Planescape or, or Ravenloft. Mm. There, are very, there are a lot of ways that you can make that campaign setting, that world, your own. And that is also something that I'm going to touch on multiple times in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because... Obviously, with these sort with these sort of advice, it it's you're using you're using Chalt as essentially essentially the template. But for, um, unless I'm misreading, you're you're not producing this with the assumption that somebody is going to be making a Gonzo post apocalypse the way Chalt is, but using it as just a just advice right. for what they're going to be making, which means right. the degree of agnosticism. Um, yeah. Would you would would you say that it makes it a bit tricky in terms of what you can use as examples so that it doesn't skew? It does. Um, a lot of it will be <clears throat> uh, agnostic or, or neutral, but I'm going to be honest and come from a place of, you know, this is what I created, and this is how I did it, and this is what I was trying to get out of it, and this is what. The reality this is what actually happened and i'm using chalt as the background mm. and uh, just as you said um and so hopefully you know um people can extrapolate and use that information to, to you know create their uh their own campaign setting but a lot of my examples and a lot of the history that I bring about my own personal history is going to be Chalt related, which is one of the reasons why the book's title is the Chalt experience designing worlds like a fucking boss. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely going to be slanted towards Chalt, but it's, it's like you said, it's going to be as neutral and agnostic as I can make it while still talking about, you know what I did with Chalt and 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 stuff from there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's all, that's also why I, f- I find the fact that you're going to be putting in some tape some table work interesting. Is that more to demonstrate how um some some of the ways that encounter tables can work? Just as one example. Oh, random tables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, obviously it's not going to be for every game master's approach. Not every game master uses random tables, but I feel like <clears throat> it's kind of a a staple and kind of um, I don't know. It's as close to a requirement as I feel like you can get. You don't have to use random tables, but I feel like you're making life harder on yourself mm. and you're not going to get the, the optimum experience if you don't ever use random tables. So when I use them in the book, they're going to be, again, practical. Like you can literally use that random table that I use as an example in your own game, uh, especially if you are running Chalts or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but also, um, the random table will will be a guide for you to create your own random table that will help you when you're designing your own world, which in all likelihood probably won't look anything like Chomps. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason I brought up that ag- agnosticism, because <coughs> an easy trap could happen where, s- some- where someone's m- developing their own their own world, going through this and skewing it towards something Chomps-like, which I which I think is pretty clear is not something that you would um, want. You would want you would want somebody to make their own world, but not feel like they have that has to be like yours, because obviously nobody's going to be held to do um, that, but you. Right. I mean, I'd, I'd be flattered if they wanted to use Chalt mm-hmm. to run their own games, and like I said, there's going to be ways for you to make something like Chalt your own. Mm-hmm. So it not only feels like it came from somewhere else, like for me, for instance, but you made it your own, so it also feels like yours. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if someone doesn't want Chalt, if someone wants to make something like Chalt, but different, they can do that. And if someone wants to make something completely different, they can do that too. But um, neutrality and, and, and agnosticism only goes so far. So I will freely admit that a lot of examples and uh, and pieces of the template, like random tables and, and such, are going to be chalt in nature. Mm-hmm. That cer- that certainly makes sense. Now, with that with that in mind, what pro- what prompted wanting to take this angle with with th- with um this particular book? Um, I think I saw a need for it. I, I don't, there are books on sort of organizing a campaign setting or books on directing game masters to, excuse me, to sort of focus mm-hmm. your campaign setting, but I didn't see too many books on the market where the author tried to show game masters how to create their own world, either from scratch or take something that already existed and modify it and personalize it so it made more sense at their table in their game than just, you know, taking it off the rack and opening it up and just being like, okay, this is everything it is, and just, like, kind of reading it verbatim and telling the players, like, you know, everything you've ever read or known about Dark Sun, like, that's all real. It just is what it is. Let's start playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that, but I I don't feel like... I feel like you're cheating yourself of a lot of experiences that comes with designing your own world. And I saw this niche that um, I, I thought I could fill, because of my experience with creating Chult, um, I started creating it, at least brainstorming the ideas, I think back in like 2018. Um, and it just, it's still developing. So um, I felt like now that I just had a year of campaign play, where before I was mostly focusing on one shots and games that lasted two or three sessions. Um, all of 2023, pretty much, was Chult in campaign mode. And having gotten enough of that under my belt, um, I felt like now was the time to um, to talk about it and to write a book about it and hopefully help other game masters do what I did to a certain extent, but do it their own way. Mm-hmm. Now, with the, so with that in mind, you're sh- as I understand it, you're shooting for about for about some 
about 32 pages with this project. That, yeah, at minimum, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a stretch goal for if I got if I got lucky and I got hit like 20,000, um, then the, the minimum page number was going to double to 64. But um, I, you know, we're stones throw away from 5,000. I, I feel like we can maybe get up to 10,000. I don't think we're going to get to 20,000. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the minimum, minimum page number I said was 32. Usually when I get writing and kind of get on a roll, um, I can write more. So I'm going to tentatively say somewhere probably between 32 and 42 pages. Um, I feel like that's a good amount um, without... I don't know. I mean, I want everything to be poignant and, and succinct and punchy. I don't want to like just go on and on, but at the same time, I want to give people enough. So they're, they don't feel shortchanged either with the advice I'm giving or, or the teaching I'm trying to implement or just the reading experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can certainly get that now. What would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date, but just a um, estimate. I expect to have the PDF out in June. So I, I, and I specifically wanted it to be to come out before VengerCon three, um, and that, that's so that's going to be my third convention, VengerCon. That's the that's the convention I, I created and I'm organizing. That's in Madison, Wisconsin, in July, and um, so yeah, the third one is approaching um, this summer. So I wanted the release to be before I had to start really focusing on the convention. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I know I can get that much out because you know I have an outline and I've I've already started writing the book, and just in the last two or three weeks, I probably have like a third of it, between a third and a quarter of it already written. And, I, and I'm just getting started now. I, I usually don't start the bulk of the writing of whatever project I'm doing until after the Kickstarter has closed. So I'm just getting a good head start on it now. And there's like a dozen different things that I want to touch on. And, and um, I write pretty fast. So mm -hmm. yeah, I should be done in plenty of time by June. Yeah. And I I will certainly be keeping an eye out on how things develop with it. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often okay. say around here, Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Yes. Got my chalk book right here. Mm -hmm. um, and for anybody that wants to back the Kickstarter, uh, for which I will be eternally grateful, um, the Chalt Hardcover Trilogy is the top tier backer reward. So um, I think at $111. So. Um, Anybody that doesn't have the Chalk Trilogy, um, or maybe you only have like the first book or something like that, you could get you get a great deal. You get all three fancy hardcover, signed and numbered uh, books. So you Chalt, Chalt Future Malays, and Chalt Chartreuse Shadows. And then you also get the PDF of the new book, The Chalt Experience, Designing Worlds Like a Fucking Boss. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so I hope um, people people back to Kickstarter, and I hope uh, you know I get more people on the Chult train, and uh, get more people going into the second half of 2024, designing their own world and, and creating their own campaign setting um, for use at the table. And uh, I know that it's gonna it's gonna open up the hobby a little bit more. To a lot of people and they're gonna have 
you know, it's, there's a little bit of work involved, but it's going to be worth it. And you're going to have a great time creating and then looking back on what you've created and being like really satisfied and feeling like you did something momentous, which you did. You created a whole fucking world. And uh, that's pretty amazing. And not only is it amazing just in and of itself, but then you get to use that world in your games, which just takes it like cranks it up to 11. It's like above and beyond at that point. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a great time. So uh, thanks for everybody who's already backed the Kickstarter and thank everybody for anybody joining the next two weeks. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody!